Hi guys, so I'm going to go through the cycle of insecure relationships. There are secure relationships, there are insecure relationships, and there are avoidant relationships. So this is going to be going through insecure relationships and what's some ways we can avoid them. This is definitely not an easy process at all. It will probably take a lot of time and it is definitely a wake up call for a lot of people because a lot of relationships that are dysfunctional are extremely painful. And when we're painful, we just want a quick fix. We just want to figure out what's wrong. And so if you've been through in a, you've been through a lot of relationships that have, you know, ended quickly or ended kind of in a fire or it started out so well. And then as time went on, it just completely obliterated or you're currently in a relationship that where you're extremely unhappy and you struggle to leave. Uh, you just feel like you love this person and you can't leave the relationship. I'm going to walk through the cycle of insecure relationships. But before I go through that cycle, I like to address that it will be painful to understand that the reason that you are picking someone who is emotionally unavailable or emotionally immature, whichever word that you choose to use, um, the reason for that is because you yourself are also emotionally unavailable. You might not realize it. It's hard for us to see from the outside looking in that we are lacking that self-awareness. But typically, if you are emotionally unavailable, you will also be picking someone who is emotionally unavailable. And you can go into a relationship thinking, oh, I'm ready for uh, a healthy relationship with someone who is emotionally unavailable. And they can start out that way. And as time goes on, they become less emotionally unavailable. So that is one thing that can also occur. But the fact of the matter is that we're just so used to this dynamic that we're so quick to jump into relationships. Uh, we don't, we're not really discerning if this person is compatible with us or, uh, you know, if they really are emotionally available at all. We're just so quick to jump into relationships head first. And so we have to take some responsibility in that there is, it's a two way street and the biggest part of that is realizing that you're just jumping way too fast into relationships, uh, not really deciding if this part, really discerning if this person is going to be with me through the hard times, through stressful times. And my biggest suggestion for that would be to go extremely slow. And that's really hard for people who have an insecure attachment style. They just want to jump into the relationship. They think that uh, this other person is going to make them happy, that they are going to finally feel fulfilled. And unfortunately, that's typically not the case. And our nervous system just gets completely messed up. We struggle to eat, sleep, obsess, because we just jumped way too fast into a relationship without really getting to know the person. Just think about that for a second. Uh, we just completely gave our whole self. And a lot of people who claim to, you know, be like love addicts or, you know, I just love this person. These are just people that are really, really searching for love that they really have within themselves, but they're looking at another person. So if there's someone who's like, oh, I'm just really in love with this person, you know, I can't let go. That's typically a sign of an insecure attachment style. Not saying there's no such thing as love. I'm, I'm saying that if you've just met this person and they're not emotionally available to you, yet you're claiming that you're in love with this person, like an overgiver in love terms or even in other ways as well, uh, that's an insecure attachment style. So you have to take responsibility in that. It's it's really hard to realize that the reason that you're picking someone who is emotionally unavailable is because you yourself are emotionally unavailable. And uh, that typically stems from childhood. There's other ways, but it typically stems from childhood. And there's ways to fix it and to catch yourself. But until you stop this cycle of pain and nervous system uh, dysregulation, the pain will just continue. And so what I would really recommend is just to go extremely slowly and not to jump into a relationship quickly, hoping this other person is going to fulfill you. So because not a lot of time has passed, you kind of have a projection or a distorted image of this person. I would call this person your love image or your love interest. So typically someone who you're planning on buying a house with, relocating with, thinking of kids' names within a few months, uh, no foundation of friendship. Um, it's going to be a big wake-up call 
when you do finally figure out this person's personality because you wanted a relationship so badly that you created this fake narrative of this person that really does not exist and it's going to be a wake-up call and typically it's too late because you've already attached to this person you have been intimate with this person and typically you have abandoned your friends your family uh, changed your entire routine for this person so you're kind of all in on this relationship with someone that you don't even really know and that's kind of the part that i want to get at that uh you're just so invested in this relationship or i would call it love object that you really have abandoned yourself as a new routine, um, your friends and family. So you're kind of isolating yourself in a way, which is very typical for insecurely attached people. And uh, what's going to happen is there's going to be an immense pressure on the love object, or I can call your partner, but I'm going to call him love object in this case. So there's going to be an immense pressure on this love object to keep you happy, fulfilled, because you have now abandoned your routine, your friends and family. So now everything is on this person who you don't even know. And if you have an insecure relationship, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it is definitely, it's hard to leave a relationship where you have, you know, stop talking to your friends, your family, and your routine is completely messed up and revolves around them, which is very typical because you projected all of this future plans, children, house and everything on someone you don't even know and that's very very common and it's it, this is all subconscious this is all extremely subconscious we don't consciously go into a relationship wanting to do this but we just get so swept up in these this idea of being saved by this love object that we just completely lose ourselves and when we do figure out who they are their personality their goals and they're mismatched we just completely are just thrown off so I'm sure this has happened to you if you're watching this video uh, and it's very, very common, but there is a way to fix it. And also another thing is uh, just making sure to stop, to stop projecting what you want onto somebody until you figure out who they actually are. Into part two is please stop doing this because you're causing an immense amount of suffering to yourself. So please stop putting all your eggs in someone's basket that you don't even know. Stop rushing into marriage, house, kids with someone that you barely know, haven't been through any situations with, because all you're doing is just causing a lot of suffering for yourself. So just take it slow and really uh, just take a minute to realize that this person, you might not even know this person. It takes time to truly reveal someone's true character. So just keep your routine, keep your friends and family the best that you can, and just you know, stop the suffering. Stop making yourself suffer. Um, there is a way to break out of the cycle, but just remember that a lot of this is unconscious, but I'm bringing it to the conscious now. We're bringing this to the conscious that, you know, you, ch you chose an emotionally unavailable partner because you yourself are emotionally unavailable and you projected a life with someone that you don't really know. You did not discern if this person is compatible with you in the dating stage, and now you're in a relationship with someone who, I repeat, you don't really know. So don't marry, have children, move with anyone that you just met and cause the suffering to continue because you can stop it. it I know it's unconscious and we it's, it's the subconscious need. Uh, I guess it's called love addiction, um, but you're just causing yourself an immense amount of suffering. So just uh, try to stop it. <laughs> And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to have a part two of Insecure Relationships coming up. So hit that bell and join the family. Love you guys so, so much. And I wish the best for you. And if you are in this type of situation, there is hope to becoming more secure. I promise you. It's just bringing all that unconscious uh, trauma and just breaking the cycle. Because the cycle is pretty much the same for almost everyone who's in this type of situation. And also you're not alone. This is very, very common. We all have friends. We all ha have people that are just stuck in the cycle and uh, just bringing the unconscious to the conscious and just stopping the suffering uh, through the series. Um, this is part one will really, really help you 
to, uh, once again, stop the suffering because it's just, it's so much, so much suffering to be in these type of dysfunctional relationships when they can be avoided, even though it's extremely hard, uh, it can be done. So once again, love you guys and uh, please keep watching.